pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. President Warner? Here. Secretary Treasurer Horwitz? Here. Trustee Powell? Present. Trustee Stafford? Here. Trustee Welker, I assume, is on her way? Okay, we have a quorum present, sir. All right. Um, the executive session, I'd like to put off to the end of the meeting. Is Fine. second on that? Yes, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we have a couple of discussion items here, and we also have uh, John McDonald here. Uh, John, would you like to come up and discuss one of our projects, please? Hello. John. Hey, John. Sign in. Please. Sign in. Just state your name for the record, John. John McDonald. Town purchasing agent. Okay. At the uh, town board meeting uh, on three twenty six. Town Board approved notice to bidders for Baycrest Avenue access project. Yep. The um, bids opened on May 1st. You guys have a copy of Everyone should have a everybody's copy result of, of the results that came in. Yep. Looking at the um, at the bids, the overall low bidder was South Shore Docks. They were the lowest responsible bidder. Okay. The yeah. question is, do you guys want to award this project to them in the entirety? I got one question. It's, um, it says number two, South Shore Dock was 42 and uh, Chesterfield was 36. You mean for the line, line item? Yes. Yeah. I have the same question. Why there's such a big difference between... Right. I honestly don't know. Um, if you take a look at the total project... Because I don't think you're going to piecemeal line one with one, with one contractor and then do line two with another. That would cause a lot of chaos, I would believe. So the overall low bid, if you want to do all five line items, is South Shore Docks. Well, I mean, I've done a couple projects, and uh, I'm going to speak from myself, past experiences. When should we uh, get... Um, the project going the contractor comes in and any work that's got to be adjusted you deal directly <coughs> with him if you have another contractor that comes in in the middle of it and then you need change work orders and to adjust anything it's going to really make the project go much longer um this is the only launching ramp in the area that can be used for the by the commercial commercial guys for loading their barges and such like that uh, it's a very uh, well-used launching ramp for recreational and commercial baymen and uh, people that use the water. So I think just to have the project done in a timely fashion, and I have seen South Shore Jocks uh, work. They do a fine job, as do all the other ones. So my personal uh, opinion would be to stick with the the five line items and go all for I would one. agree with that. Right. He's 60000 <laughs> bucks, roughly, what, $60,000 around less than the next responsible bidder. And I think that uh, the public's been waiting like a decade for this project to get done. It's finally coming to fruition. Uh, I think um, the discussion, if that's, if that's the case and we do award, we, I believe, set aside um, in bonds around 375000 for this project. So we do have two other sets of bonds. Uh, those projects are, are delayed. Uh, so the question is, do we um, make up the difference out of fund balance, or is there the possibility of us using more of the bonding line for this project since it's a similar you know it's bulkheading ramp dock whatever that's a discussion with the comptroller um, but I really think that it's well overdue from being done uh, a good percentage of the infrastructure that the trustees own um, and hold in trust for the public to uh, utilize and enjoy and like trustee Warner said the commercial industry uses this facility for loading and unloading and it's important to get projects done on the waterfront I think it needs to get done sooner than later at this point in time so yeah. I'd agree with trustee Warner that we should award all the lines to the uh, South Shore docks and um, 
get this done. And I believe, Billy, this was your area and you had gotten the permit yeah, originally. So you're familiar with it and you, yeah. you know there's been a problem up there for a long time. Yes. So we placed years ago. Yep. All right. It's in. in. I don't know if she wants to go to all we're just talking about the Bay Crest Avenue project and the fact that South Shore Docks is the lowest responsible bidder is about sixty thousand dollars less. And we're talking about perhaps awarding the, the job to get started, finished. Yeah, but there's five different line items, and we're looking one of the, the different line items. Yeah, going line by line, uh, South Shore Docks isn't the lowest on all of them. They're the lowest on most of them, and their bid did come in considerably lower than the next one. So, being that the projects that we've done in the past to have the single contractor come in, it usually works the most seamless and the quickest for getting the project done. Is there any difference in the timeline when each one could start? We haven't even gotten that conversation yet, I don't think. We do have specifications in there. Okay. When the bit job has to be done by. Okay. Yeah, completion dates. Correct. Yeah. And usually South Shore Docks does a very good job and they're usually very attentive to their projects. Oh, good. So. All right. So we're good on Any that? Thoughts? No, I'm, I'm good on it. Does that mean we're going to have a resolution on for Monday's meeting then? Actually, this is with the town, so I'll put it on the May 28th meeting. Okay. With the town. Okay. Okay. This includes the um, gate, right? It, I believe it has everything. Well, the gate was I, supposed to be removed and I think, replaced. I believe, I believe yeah. so. I yes. think that was actually one of the questions yeah. in the addendum. The, right. Yes. yes. The removal, okay. removal the and replacement. Question yeah. we wanted yep. to put it back. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. yes. That's good. All right. So we're good. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks, Thank John. you, John. Thank you, John. Great job. Right. Thank Thanks, you. John. Um, Thanks for all your help on the whole process, yes. John. Thank yep. you. Uh, the next uh, discussion is blue green algae, Lake Aguam, Doug Reiner, Dennis, yeah. what? Reamer, Reamer, uh, Genesis Water Technologies. Mr. Reamer here. Would you like to come up, please, and sign in? Um, the board had asked our environmental analysts to look over your proposal and to uh, make some comments uh, on it. Uh, would you like to yep. uh, Sorry. give us uh, your thoughts? All right. So I uh, looked into some further research regarding uh, his proposal and the technology that's being proposed. I uh, couldn't really find that many uh, actual scientific research, especially large area scientific research um, for it. I do have a couple of papers that were given to me, and I looked over them, as well as some case studies that the uh, that are posted on the website for uh, the technology. Um, and most of them are overseas. I think there was one in uh, Florida, I think, I believe. Florida, Maryland. Uh, so uh, I also reached out to Suffolk County Health Department. Um, they've been doing their research on it. I guess it was proposed to them last year, um, 2018. Uh, and they looked into it with the DEC. Currently, the DEC is performing um, a small pilot projects using the technology, um, which did not result in result in any detectable improvements in water quality. Um, they are still evalu evaluating mitigation pilot projects, um, and they're contracting with Cornell to con conduct laboratory and field fish studies to look at non-target impacts of it. Um, The results, which are expected to inform potential future use of um, these ultrasonic devices. Um, I also reached out to Dr. Goldler, who sent me two, uh, two case studies and um, research papers that I can, you guys can read if you'd like. Can you, can you summarize them? Yeah, I'm going to give you a summary now, uh, which came from Goldler. Uh, these, these are done by top experts in the cyanobacteria field. And um, both of the papers found uh, that there's not, it's not a good approach controlling cyanobacteria uh, because the ultrasound disrupts the food web and minimally affect the uh, cyanobacteria. Um, so, uh, like I said, the EC is still evaluating it. So I, I would recommend not moving forward with it right now. 
um, until there's more evidence that it's going to work and, and the DEC can get on board as well with it um, because they are conducting studies and I think it would be good to see those studies and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and, and normally we would ask the DEC for a permit for, you know, for right. oversight of the uh, project. So if they're not 100% uh, on board, I don't think we would even right. have to acquire that because I know with Mill Pond, uh, just from my experience being on this board, you, uh, doing a project like the Solar Bees, where we didn't have any science to back it up, and and having a very large fish kill, I'd be very uh, cautious proceeding forward with any project without having the science to back it up. That's just my. We appreciate your time and your interest, yeah. though, in this because it's important. Well, being that it's on the radar, it's being discussed and being used as in small pilot projects around the, uh, you know, the state here, maybe in the future it's something that could possibly, you know, work for this area. Uh, one of the concerns that I had uh, over and above the how, how functional is it, it would be the actual cost of the project and how it would be paid for. You know, we look for CPF 20 uh, to... Uh, put a lot of the bills of the projects and um, if, if was, we were going to go that route we would need to uh, you know come up with a you know a proposal a written proposal with science backing it up to present it to the CPF uh, committee to see if it's something that would pass muster in the future. So. Can be done? Is that? That's what that could be done. Okay. So I, mean, I think for right now, I mean, I, I don't think it's something that we should move on. I think it's something that well, we should get a little more research and uh, get some more information. Uh, that's just my opinion. I know what the rest of the board feels. I agree. You know, I agree with you, Ed, and with James. That it's a hold. Just have to wait a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Thank you for your time. Yep. Thank, right. you. Thank, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for bringing uh, it to us or attention so we can look, look at it. Um, Bruce, you do have a uh, discussion on here. Okay. Miles? Hey, you can go there, you can sit here, sign oh, yeah. in. Yeah, you can yeah. sit here if you like. Um, this is Mr. Is Bill Bad. He's a partner. In Thank you. Miles, just state your name for the record. I'm Miles Brigolari. Okay. Thank you. Um, we may be here a little prematurely for our our process, but I actually just emailed the trustee's office to ask about it. Uh, uh, we have like a small like group of kids that we take surfing every morning and during the summer, and it's you know it's eight to maybe twelve kids, and uh, I I actually emailed. We have done it in the village. And we'd like to continue doing it in the village, but I emailed the trustees' office just to find out if there's a like what if we need a permit for that, and if there's a permitting process. And I was asked to come to this meeting, so we showed up like we didn't realize we were walking into such a big deal. But uh, <laughs> but um, so yeah, we really just had questions about it. We don't I don't know if we're ready to even jump on this, but we really wanted to know about the permitting process for this, what we needed to do, or do we need a permit for what we were doing? Your site is in the village, well, right? Is that yeah? Well, I mean, our site is on a beach somewhere, and it's been in the village. Um, I assume if we want to do it on a village beach, we're sitting in the wrong room right now, correct? Um, no, maybe not. Okay. Well, so a lot of it depends on where you're doing something, right? It's uh, location, location, location. Okay. So, the trustees hold an easement mm -hmm. over the beach from yeah. the top of the dune to the. Um, to the oh, high okay. tide mark. That would be our area. <laughs> <laughs> in all yeah. beaches, right? So I imagine your your surf lesson probably involves a little bit of time on the beach, yes. paddling and pop ups, right? I, yeah, very little. I mean, we we the way that we run is we like to do in the village because we have a small group of kids. They're mostly they mostly live in the village. They can ride their bikes there. It doesn't lead to a lot of people driving places and parents sure. having to drop them off and parking lots being clogged up. So we'd like to remain in the village. Um, like last year we used Wine Dance Beach, and uh, you know I just really was curious. Do I is this something that I need a permit for, and do I need to go like go through you guys? I'm, I I had no idea. I didn't like I was really just asking questions and was told to come to this meeting. So, so I'm gonna say it's it's ultimately a decision for the trustees to make. Anything that happens in their easement, <laughs> um, <laughs> they can require a permit for, especially where it might impede public pass and repass. Um, there's always. A wise move to make sure that um, the trustees are protected from 
liability should anything happen within the easement. Um, and then, you know, you look at what the impact is on the public's resource, which is the beach. Um, you know, in the instance of boat launching ramps, right, uh, the trustees have granted licensing agreements to certain companies. And what that does is it just says that this company has appeared before the trustees, they've provided the proper insurance, etc. cetera. Um, so at this point, this is a, a new discussion for the trustees with respect to? Yeah, this is my main concern. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to make sure that the kids are covered. Yeah, from, we, from top we have, to bottom. We have liability. Okay. We have a liability well, policy, but yeah, but um, that the, that the kids are covered and that you've got enough uh, people watching them. You know, yeah. just, uh, the kids will get away from you on the beach. Yeah. Uh, we have a sec second gentleman here, Shane Dykeman, which does the similar. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's for discussion, so all the board members get on 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 the same page as this. Yeah. Because we just want the kids protected. Yeah. Yeah. We have so. Our program specifically, um, so far, we've, like, we've had a couple friends help out, and we've all been certified lifeguards um, by Southampton or East Hampton Town certification. Um, everyone has current CPR. Um, you know, we keep one person on the beach at all times to keep track of everyone, and it's a very small group of kids. I mean, we, you know, we, I think the most we ever had, we had 13 one day, you know? It's like, and I don't, we don't have no real, we don't really want to go much beyond that. So, um, what are the hours of uh, nine to 12? <clears throat> so it's, it's in the morning, and yeah, and like I said, we try and keep in the village just so we're, we're not causing a lot of traffic. With you know, it's these kids mostly ride bikes there, so um, that was really our reason for that location. But uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I understand the concerns of like the surf school, so I'm like, you know, trying to head those off ahead of time. And I've you know, I've been doing this for 20 years, we haven't had like a program ourselves where we've worked you know where we've had like groups of kids other than just one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one lessons before um until the end of last season so we'd like to continue doing that i just yeah i'm really just checking in to see if we well reason yeah, why, another reason involved. we have other people doing this for a business too and there's certain requirements that we require for you to do this on the beach like you're not taking money on the beach that'd be mm -hmm. a definite no no you're not blocking yeah. the easement and there are enough adults that are certified CPR, and you have the right insurance, and yeah. the, just the protection. Because okay. myself, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, I'm grateful that you're doing this, teaching our kids how to use the water. Because if the kids weren't using the water, what would, be, what would they be, be doing? Maybe they'd be doing something else. I mean, this is a great thing that we have out here, yeah. and I'm happy for everybody to do it. But I'm only one trustee. There's five of us to make the decision. Yeah, okay. So how many vehicles are you putting on the beach? On the beach, zero. Yeah, yeah no, no vehicles. We, we had this discussion for many, many years since I've been on the board yeah. about um, surf schools. You know, if they should have a license agreement, if they should not have a license agreement. Um, it has gone back and forth between, you know, different town attorneys, how they feel mm -hmm. to guide us. Yeah. Um, I think what, one of the things we have to do is go back to um, into our files and see how we discuss the other ones okay. on in the minutes before we because we don't want to you know change what we thought yeah. five years ago yeah. or maybe we should improve it but the one thing what we the big thing back then was no money transfer on the beach um, and liability insurance like Bruce said um, and if one thing about if you give your license agreement it doesn't mean that that is your area. Mm -hmm. It's still open to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know that piece, guy, yeah. that guy over there. You know, mm -hmm. um, that was one of the problems. What we were discussing if we did give a license agreement. Yeah, I think we. You know, I was just whispering to Ed that we really have to go back and look in the past minutes of how we yeah. discussed it. I, I think there was a public hearing and we had a lot of information uh, that was brought forth about people using it as their, you know, uh, the, the regular surface outside yeah. of your surf camp and they had a lot of questions and I, I want to do some research before I say any more, but I think that, and, I, and I'm pretty sure Billy will recognize this, that's why it went to the village yeah. know, off of the easement and away from the town parks and the town trustees property. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research yeah. before I... We can get back to you on it. You know, okay. Keep on checking back with us. Okay. We, and, have, to, we have to be fair to everyone. Yeah. To yeah, all yeah, yeah. Should, should I leave so, contact information in the trustee's uh, office yes. with, like, with yeah. Jessica or something? And, yeah, okay. And then you guys will keep me yeah. updated or yeah. should I contact no. you? Okay. Yeah. 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 You, you're, you're Bruce's area. So yeah. he'll keep you updated. Okay. Just keep on, you know, 
talking to him. Okay. And the biggest thing is the next time you come in, if you come in, is to come with an actual proposal, not what we're guessing here, doing this and this and this, Absolutely. and assuming okay. that, because we, we went through this before, and yeah. you know, uh, I like to get everything tightened up pretty tight, so, so if we decide to have a public hearing, the people that have the concerns can uh, that, voice yeah, that's not true. yeah, that's no. kind of what I emailed was I just kind of wanted to know what the criteria yep. for a proposal or what we needed to bring. Yep. You know, I, I mean, we should have brought stuff with us. I, I didn't really know that we were coming into like a whole meeting with everyone. I well, it's of, a good, yeah. we started the conversation, um, so. Okay. The trustees can set the criteria that they want and that, you know, any potential applicants that they bring. Um, I think there are yeah. different types of search schools here in the yeah. town of Southampton, um, some informal, some more very formal. Um, so, you know, this is a conversation starter for the trustees to start figuring out um, what information they need and how they want to proceed. You want to have Shane come up? Yeah, yeah. If he's got yeah. the same uh, yeah, come up, Shane. Well, Good afternoon, topics Shane of Dockman, 220 yes. Town Line Road, Sagaponic. Yes, Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hey, Shane, how are you doing? Uh, good, thanks. Um, just wanted to sit in on the discussion and um, you know, just make sure everybody's on the same page. I've been doing this now, will be my going on my 16th season. Um, I've always tried to follow all the guidelines that everybody has, uh, you know, pushed me to do, or not pushed, but that I had to do with my, you know, $2 million insurance plan. All the men are covered with workman's compensation. Everybody's qualified CPR first aid. And uh, you know, never go to uh, a lifeguarded beach or or one with bathrooms. Um, I've been operating a small camp, 20, 20 kids, twenty five kids maximum in August, and like a look, leave five extra spaces for uh, makeup days and so forth. And uh, I've been doing that, you know, successfully for now. Like I said, this will be my sixteenth season um, since. Uh, since the start of all of this, um, Southampton Village has created a bidding system. Uh, I've been putting in an application every season for that. I've been awarded that bid. And, um, you know, it's... Is that uh, for like an exclusive yeah, area of the beach then? Right. They, we, we pick a specific sandbar, uh, you know, <clears throat> again. You know, using the right for public access, um, the easements, you know, making sure we're not blocking those. Uh, everybody's got their beach permits in order. And, uh, you know, we meet and then operate down within the high tide medium, and most of the instructions is in the ocean. Uh, a lot of ocean swim safety, lifeguard techniques. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there's multiple people doing it. Uh, you know, surfers come along and, you know, I would like to call them pirate camps or schools that pop up, you know. And uh, it, it's tough for us when, you know, we're the ones playing by all the rules and, and it costs a lot of money to get this stuff going and, and a lot of effort to, to do the right thing. And then if other schools are going to come along, let's just make sure everybody's on the same page and, and they have all the qualifications to do so. Uh, as Bruce mentioned, you know, it's, it's, it's a very dangerous thing we do, taking children in the water, and we've got to make sure we're covered. And the men covered as well. Right. Can I just I ask one question? What has been the public's, in, your interaction with the public or the perception of what you do from the public standpoint? I mean, I know there's a lot of people well, that surf. There's, there's two sides of it, okay? We have uh, all the residents that send their kids to the surf school, which enjoy it. Their kids learn how to be safe in the ocean and around. And and then you have some local surfers that, you know, have, have a very uh, old-fashioned mentality of not sharing the waves with anybody. So that's, you know, the opposition is always would come back to, you know, an old guard surfing mentality of not sharing waves at the end of the day. That's what's going on. Okay. Plus, you, you always make sure your area is clean, cleaner than. Oh, we do beach cleanups, you know. Um, You're very good you know, that. You know, the guys pull up with the garbage trucks we help, you know, because a lot of times, um, the beach parties and whatnot, they leave all their rubbish and then the garbages are overflowed. You know, we're always down there cleaning up. It's part of the program too. It's like keep the beaches clean and safe and you know, it'd be broken wine bottles or stuff like that. Someone could get hurt and what have you, you know. That's that's all I have for today. Okay. Um, I'm, I brought a packet for you. Maybe you guys want to review it. 
Uh, is that the, the village information? This is the village information, and it's all, all the, all the uh, yeah. Yeah. Just stamp it in. Yeah. Yeah. Stamp it in. And just stamp that in just for you to review. Question, I was gonna say that's I that's was, basically you know, the guidelines that village. I've been following for that, just so you guys yeah. have some kind of reference point. Yes, we have to that. be all on the same page and be fair to everyone. Right. Right. I mean, you've been doing it for 16 years. You say you've been doing it for 20 years. So you you do guys you guys have some uh, history there. So you know, uh, and you do have the recommendations from the village of what the parameters they set. So I would like to look at it and see sure. what our board or how our board can. Uh, when when this came up to discussion, maybe about eight years ago, mm -hmm. I, about maybe 10 years ago, I got a resolution through the village. Um, you know, I kind of saw this coming about, so I got a resolution, but for whatever reason, the village needed to, they didn't overturn it, that resol resolution is still in the books, but um, there were, like we, we discussed a moment ago of how the, the local surfers not wanting to share their ways, blah, 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 we had to come up with a secondary plan. Um, and they wanted me to get a state permit so I went to the state of New York and we tried to get a state permit and I don't qualify for one because there's some things that we don't transport the children, we don't feed the children. So I fall under what's called the day camp, which the state will not write a permit. So the village came up with their own sort of bidding system for those local beaches. You know. Okay. That's some good information. So. Okay. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks very much for your Thank time. You Appreciate it. You, we got all your contact information, correct? Yeah, yeah. everything's yeah. on there. Okay. Mine. Thanks. What's the fee that they charge you for this? Your fee from the village? From the village, it was a bid. So there was no particular fee in mind. You know, it was just whatever. Whatever. So the we bid can get was. all that information. Yeah. I will say the village system almost seems like counterproductive to their goals in a way, like the way that they. I, I just learned about their system, you know, last week when they, like, when they rejected all the bids that had come in, and uh, it seems like if they're bidding for it, you're gonna have to, like, you're just gonna end up with these larger surf schools on the beach because you gotta cover the cost of the bid. So it seems like if they're trying to avoid, you know, a big congregation of surfer of surf camp kids in one area, like that seems almost counterproductive to it. To you know, well, that's but, the information we're gonna have to look at yeah. and you know, work through. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thanks. How's it going? Good. Thanks again. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. All the best. Okay. Um, the next discussion is uh, Anne's discussion. Uh, we'd like to table that, please. Yep. Second it. All today. in favor? Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. James, like to start on the. Applications here, please. Yep, I got a renewal. The first one for Robert and Doreen Grigo. Um, it's 10 12 uh, private right of way, Hampton Bays. Uh, the body of water is Abe's Cove off of uh, the Shinnecock Canal. It's a, Renewal for uh, trustee permit FLH 0002. Remember this one? Yep. Installation of a boat lift with electrical services, uh, 20,000 pound lift. We had looked at it last time and everybody had agreed on it. No so changes? There's no changes, so I'd like to move it forward as it is right now if everybody's good with it. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Where is that located again? In Abe's Cove. Abe's Cove. It's the north side of uh, Jackson's, Jackson's okay. Mine Marina. I have an application here for Canal Properties LLC. Second renewal for uh, One North Road, uh, Hampton Bays. Um, it came in last, yeah, it's last the, meeting, I think. Yeah, it's. Okay, would you like to uh, come forward and uh, state your name and sign in for the record? Um, well, it's a second renewal. It's uh, the, uh, the proposed project includes shoreline stabilization in the form of a revetment, which will be placed 
uh, the current rubble mound uh, mound uh, revetment located along the southerly portion of the property stabilization is required to the protect the uh, proposed residential development located on the landward portion of the property the proposed revetment will be uh, 330 plus or minus feet in length and will require the replacement of 600 cubic yards of one to two ton stones and uh, 220 cubic yards of three to six inch stones as an underlayment uh, below the sp uh, spring high water, 1400 cubic yards of existing slope located below the uh, spring high water will be removed for the installation of the revetment. The existing 30 feet aluminum uh, gangway will be replaced with an existing floating dock, uh, which will remain the gangway and the floating dock will be attached to uh, nine uh, foot by eight foot by four foot by four foot uh, L-shaped uh, float. Additionally, 35 cubic yards of clean material will be used to stabilize uh, the area upland scoured out in the location. Uh, the existing timber piles on the north side of the site will be re uh, reconfigurated to allow 20 boat slips within the marina. Um, we have approved this last time, basically. Uh, it's if everybody's familiar with the site it's the uh, area between the old tide runners and the montauk highway bridge all the uh cement <clears throat> and stuff that's falling into the canal now is going to be removed and it's going to be uh replaced with a uh, a stone uh revetment which would stabilize that shoreline um, there's been some extreme erosion in the area uh over the last uh five or six years um so uh that's basically summarizing it. So I recommend that we uh, renew it for a third time unless someone has an issue with it. Just a question. Um, landward of the bulkhead, what is there a buffer? Is there a walkway? I, I'm not sure I'm clear on that. Landward of the bulkhead, yes. that's the still. The landward of the revetment. The landward of the revetment. So um, here's the plans. There is. Uh, there's a revetment, and landward of that is just a straight bluff. It's about a 10-foot drop. So from the top of the bluff to the south end of it. And then the uh, area, which is the viewing area, which I don't know if it was even that's on there. It's on the southerly end of it. Uh, right here. Right. The only reason I'm asking is because further uh, north? Where, where the old side runners is? Yes. There's been a fair amount of uh, removal of whatever vegetation was there, it, so I'm just... There is no... Res they, it's been completely... All of that vegetation that was um, along where the tide runners is, it was and where it goes into the uh, canal here, so it's been all excavated out. Right. So are that you was asking... All building. That was a building there. Yeah, that was that was tide runners. Yeah, the, but okay. that, the, the grass which she was talking about that was standing here. Yeah. Was it was in here. This was the building. The yep. float was, this is the float. And yep. stuff was in this one corner. Okay. Here, up here was, that was all in order when it comes around. Yes. So. Okay. Well, the majority of the southerly end of it is completely eroded out and falling, yeah. literally falling in the canal. Yes. Yeah, inside the canal. Yeah. So, what's your question? Is it? it? Well, it's just, is there any type of buffer there? But there's not if it's sheer bluff. No, it's it, it's going to be a rock revetment, basically, yeah, from the a, water straight up. There might be something behind here. There's a walking trail behind walking here, but here. It's, it's considerably landward. Yeah. I don't have this. We don't have the site plans for everything that's... I mean, this yeah. is this is more um, probably more than 10, 10 foot feet. because of the slope. Okay. So it would be out of our jurisdiction. Imagine okay. this. Uh, there's and you, you mentioned buffer. it's a third renewal. I believe it's second renewal. Second renewal. Second, it's second renewal. Second renewal. Yes. Okay. It's a second renewal. Yes. Okay. No, because you said third. Then yes. Yeah. It's a second renewal. Yeah. Well, I mean, we we approved it. It was renewed, and this will be the third you. time over. They're going to be renewing. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, does anybody have any further questions about it? And I'd like to move it forward. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. We're good. Thank, Thank you. you. So it's going to be renewed. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, I have a few of them. Um, they, we worked on them all in uh, the work sessions. Uh, we'll go down them. First one I have is Thomas Vestola, Nine Dolphin Road. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. welcome. Reconstruct 112 linear feet of bulkhead in place of existing, utilizing vinyl sheet piling new bulkhead to be six inches higher to match the neighbor to the north. 
do 10 foot vial returns inside the property lines as necessary, maintenance dredge, um, the area to four feet MLW, 79 cubic yards to be uh, of the spoil to be used as backfill behind the new bulkhead, four by 112 untreated boardwork landward of the bulkhead, establish a 10 foot stone non turf buffers required by Southampton Town Trustees, uh, remove existing three by 11 and a half ramp and five by five by 12 foot float and install a four by five platform leading to a three by 12 ramp with a six by 20 float secured by two 10 inch pilings, all materials to be untreated. This is the one where we requested them pull the uh, float closer to the bulkhead. And we no, here, the keep plan. the plan, I'm gonna bring up the plan on, on this so then we don't lose okay. the water. Yeah, so I basically, that was the issue that the board had uh, when we initially reviewed this plan, everything else was okay. It's just we wanted to save as much room in that canal as possible. Yep. So we asked them to pull it close to the uh, to the bulk heading, which they've done, and they've got uh, everything to be in compliance with our Blue Book regulations, and I believe it's okay to go at this point in time. So we good? Move it forward? Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, the next one that I have, uh, also we worked on... Um, was a uh, three ramp pasture road, Joe Coster, which uh, was Hampton Landing. The board um, had some requests for drainage to be put in for um, the area, but there already was, I went back down, there were some pictures here. He's already provided that. And as you'll see, there's varying different levels of project there, and it's in, in very, very bad shape. Uh, so at this point in time, the issues that the board had, I think, have been addressed because it does have the drainage that's in place there. And, and there is a drainage pipe on the road that the Town Highway Department has. It goes directly into uh, Smith's Creek, which should be removed. Should well, either should be removed or some catch further catch basins be placed in that area because it, that would cut down a lot of the runoff. The only concern I have with the, the catch basin I just saw there, how far away from that we can wash the boats off. That's all the debris going into that drain. Well, that's, I haven't, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, isn't, uh, is a consultant and you can see. Would you like to come forward and. So it's going to remove, replace, and place approximately 120 feet of uh, existing bulkhead Navy style to 18 inches higher. And 16 foot section along the boat ramp, clamshell dredge, a 10 foot wide area along the bulkhead to 4 MLW, uh, approximately 25 cubic yards placed it behind the bulkhead project, uh, remove and replace the existing 15 by 36 wood boat launch with a precast concrete panel. So, and, it, and it's in desperate need of um, work. But you see, there's the conditions. So, your question was about where he washes the boats off if the drain was. Uh, Okay, this, this is John Kester. He's the owner of the facility. Sir, just state your name for the record, please. I'm Joseph Enrico. E N R I C O. And you're with Ocean Consulting? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <coughs> so, what was your question? About. I see the, the one picture what Scott gave us, where the forklift is, where you haul the boats out, where you wash them. How far is that from the drain drainage, where the debris goes? I didn't hear you. The where you back the forklift up when you lift the boats up. Yeah. You have a. That's all bluestone, and yeah. there are two catch basins there. Yeah, but right here. So where yeah. do you wash your boats when you take them out? We don't wash them. We wash them on the bluestone. We don't wash on the uh, on the ramp. Okay. Because we can't. It's still over, over yeah. the water when you have a boat on the fork. So you wash in the, the we pack paint. it up on away from the ramp and wash it with a blue stone. You put anything down to catch the debris, or it just goes right to the. No, there's, you know, we we wash the barnacles off, you know. Should be. I think we oh, has to have some. Down some type of mesh to catch the debris. Yeah, there was something that uh, we had done at uh, the Hampton, other Hampton yeah. Watercrafts. Also, you did it at Jackson's, too. 
Yeah, it is. Again, he's poor. Well, the yeah. catch basin doesn't discharge to the creek, though, so all the material would probably be caught in the catch basin. Well, I think what Billy's getting to is, is and what we had done uh, at one of the, actually a couple of the other marinas, we'd actually asked for a vessel to catch all the bottom paint that was dislodged. That way it wouldn't go back into the environment. Yeah. Do you clean the, the catch basin then? Not really, um, but we know. can we can put something under the boat yeah. when we wash them. I have no problem. With can that. you can you make like a uh, like a cement vessel where you wash them so all the uh, debris, like the, all the paint chips and everything, is I'm pretty sure that we did that with Hampton Watercraft and. Uh, you want to make sure because you want to be fair. Yeah, because the any of the uh, bottom paint that gets dislodged and gets back into the environment is is detrimental to the shellfish. Um, I know nothing gets back into the. Into the uh, creek from the other, and uh, I'm just uh, I'm not I'm trying to. Uh, could we look up and see what we did at Hampton Watercraft just yeah. to give you I mean, a record? Right now he's <coughs> asking for bulkhead replacement. Yes, there's bulkheads rotting, and he's yeah. just looking to no. to the dredge back there, and he's looking to replace his uh, treated lumber and remove it and do a nice precast concrete panel boat ramp. So, you know, he's done this in anticipation of maintaining all his drainage on the site and on property so it doesn't drain yeah. into the yeah, waterway. So I, yeah. I get what you're saying. I'm just trying to figure out <clears throat> what he's doing right now, you know, if we're not going, he's not going all the way up there. I mean, I guess he could put something. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I have no problem with the project. Yeah. I just want to, my question is, you know, I don't want the stuff to go back into the creek there because that creek's already. Yeah, I mean, it's creek's pretty bad. Yeah. But you're saying that you don't do that. It doesn't go into the creek. Well, the catch basin goes into catch the catch basin. basin. It doesn't discharge. Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. So but if it, it gets gunked up, it would, could have to be cleaned you out. You have to get a machine and have well, it pumped out. Right. Can, can we do that then? Make it sure. a contingent at the catch basin? Because basically, we want we once this material becomes dislodged off the bottom of the boat, we don't want it going back in the water. Yeah. So if you're going to wash it over your catch basin, yeah. I would like to put something in I the permit. You, gotta, you know, uh, you know. Yeah, just check what you did to the other guys. To be yeah. Real. All right. All right well, so let's let's uh, this uh, for what he's doing here, removing and replacing no. 120 foot. I think he can advance, and then we could just put the same conditions on that yeah. he did with the other ones. We could do it that way. Right. Yes. yes. So you're okay with that. Some uh, condition as to clean. I'm I'm gonna look. We're gonna look up what we did on the other marinas as okay. far as you know vessels that they use to c catch the uh, material after they wash okay. the boat. I think they, I think a couple more was like just like a black mesh material. They put it down and oh, like we bought to hold it. Then after they wash, I'm the familiar bottom. with it. They yeah. do that a lot in Nassau County. Yeah, and yeah. They, yep. then they pick it up. So and they so, you, so what, what we're asking you could come up with That's on to, on yeah, the plan. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, all right. I just got to be fair what we do to that. Yeah. He he said he already does it on marinas and up in Nassau. So what yeah. we're talking about, he's familiar with. He can draw up the plans and put them in with this application so we can put it in move it forward so we ain't advance it if he gets us the plans right. yeah, yes. I'll get that. yeah how did we get from that bulkhead to washing boats it goes in the goes it in the goes water. in the water yeah and smith's creek as we all know can't even be dredged because of the all the sediments that's all that stuff material that's in those sediments yeah that's how so we're washing like 30 boats a year maybe not even that many and you have a 30-inch pipe coming down from the street going right out under our property that, that's not street. that's not my pipe and that's no. a problem that's it not is i agree with you i agree with you on that and, and we've and already that's, mentioned it that's no argument I, I think you should advance this project because yes, it's, no. it's bulkhead no. and uh, and it's all him maintaining and the guy has tried to do the best he can yeah. he he does have a valid point and then let's take a yeah. look at what conditions we put so we get best yes. practices yes but i think he's already doing that based on what he's saying but I yeah. think that's fair. No, I, I, I'm not dumping any paint or anything. We, no. we usually have, you know, unwrap a boat, stick the, the wrapping under the boat, and then we work. Yeah. We bundle the whole thing up, put it in the dumpster, and get rid of it. Right. Well, that's that's what we want. So but not everybody does that's that. that. But yeah. We're already doing that. Okay. But let's right. advance it, yep. and then we'll. Yeah, and, and okay. so we, we, we can at right. least work. So yeah, we'll we'll contract it to get it. Yeah. yeah, and I have been down at your marina quite a few times and i've seen the sand pile that's at the end of the outfall pipe so right. so uh maybe that's a conversation we'll have with uh, uh another town department correct yeah okay you have one drain coming to my property one to yours yep 
and one to Answer. Jim Flaherty. Yep. Okay, thank you, Scott. Yeah. We'll put that on the CPS fund. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, that was should be done. Is that good, then? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you gentlemen. Thank, thank you again. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I have yeah, 27. A, that water is terrible. Old, old point. point. Yeah. Oh, well, they're trying. Bill, to you're up. No, no, I got another one. Oh. Hang on. He has another application. Who does? Ocean Consulting. Oh, if you want to stay. Yeah, one of Anne's. You want to do? That? Okay, just wanted to make. No, sure. I've got I've got um, 27 Old Point Road and Quad construct a new four by 88 foot catwalk uh, with a, a three by 12 ramp and a six by 20 float. Um, you gonna bring that one up too? Yes. We did do a nice bulkhead project there as well, which was closed out, right, James? Yes. And now they're coming back looking for this, which we believe to be in compliance with uh, the blue book. Right here. That's not where it gets. Two and a half feet. Yep. So it looks to be that it's a totally uh, compliant project. Right. Not over the extended property line. What a good one. Bulkhead one, sorry. They closed the bulkhead one out, right? Yes. Two feet above grade. You guys saw that? Okay. You good? Thank you. So we're good then? Um, I, we're advancing you, Dale Scott. It appears to be compliant yes. with what we generally yes. do, so. Advance. I know James is going to try and bring it up for everybody to see All on the right. screen, but they've looked at it here, so I want to move on to the next one. Yeah. Geez, All right. Fun. We're going to advance it. It meets the Blue Book regulations. It, it looks like a good project. <clears throat> now, Trustee Pell is up, right? Okay. Into science. We just, we just advanced here. it. I said to you, Billy, you're up, and you sat there. <laughs> I met all the Blue Book. You guys are not paying attention. This is to, this is to be called and, and met resolution 2019-142-9151 Flying Point Road, LLC, 95-1 Road, that's the address. It's basically, we had approved it at um, three feet and we have to change it to four and a half feet. They gave us a new cover sheet. Where's this body of water? Channel body of water, Channel Pond. I thought the Army Corps was in touch with jurisdiction over Channel Pond or Jewel Pond or any of the ponds. Army Corps said they were going to issue a permit for three feet. Yes. And then they issued me a permit for four and a half. <laughs> Without uh, talking to me, it's Bart D. Martino. I don't know if you know Bart. He's Sicilian. He's got a bad temper. And uh, Is it a mistake? He's uh, not really very considerate and I've seen him cuss out the trustees before in East Hampton so I'll leave it at that we ended up with the dock Army Corps uh, permit issued four and a half feet the house is built the guy is begging to uh, get the dock under construction I spoke to Ann briefly I don't believe I spoke to Bill but uh, at four and a half feet um, you still won't be able to see the uh, dock it's in the middle of Foot that was right that was going to, I'm asking Billy for the uh, just to look at it, but I'll the take years. Uh, we I just want to see the how much uh, cattails and frag money. There's a lot. We showed pictures. Uh, it's thick. So it'd be similar like to some yeah, of Bruce's yeah. docks that we've approved in the past where the docks. I'll give you a hokey story. When our flag wetlands in there, Marty Shea wouldn't go in there to verify it. He just said that's good enough. Okay. <laughs> 
All right. I knew it could make somebody laugh. Uh, and, and this is kind of the, the Bruce Stafford uh, handrail. We have a top rail, but no middle rail. Okay. And the reason why we're able to do that, and uh, Anne has been patient enough to listen to me uh, vent, uh, is because in the town of Southampton, we don't need a building permit for handrails. Okay. That's in contrast to the other one I got. If you want to mm -hmm. listen to me for five seconds, I'll give you the rest. Um, but that's that's it. I think um, all the other permits have been issued and all the other permits have been amend amended to four and a half feet because after I got done with getting permits for three feet, I had to go back and get an amendment from DEC, Department of State, and you folks for four and a half feet. So we'll move that ahead, Bill? Yes. All right. The next one I have for you is Are you that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Southampton RE Partner LLC. It's the first renewal. The address is 95 Down East Lane, Southampton. Oh, reinforcements. Yeah. Bring them back. Emily. Okay. That's been changed. I know, right? Gotta keep them in line. They have to come up with good hokey stories. <laughs> <laughs> he talks less than you do. I do. <laughs> Try and keep things moving. Can I see some I really wanted to go quickly, but. I thought baseball games in 10 minutes. I'll probably not miss it anymore. It's probably going to be rained out. No, it isn't. Send them wretches. Oh. They can't rain it out. It's too important. Too much traffic to get there. I'm going anyway. Can I sign you one? All right. This is a renewal application. I brought extra. Name for the oh, sure. Emily Rabbi from InterScience. Thank you. I brought extra copies of the plans that we submitted last April. If you want to see them. So this is for renewal. It's uh, 95 Down East Lane in the Village of Southampton. Um, and you had previously proposed or approved a four by sixteen ramp up connecting to a four by eight landing, which was four and a half feet above grade as required by Army Corps, um, leading to a four by sixteen ramp down connecting to a four by seventy two foot elevated catwalk measuring twenty six inches above mean high water, and then it ended at a four by six step down platform with a ladder to launch kayaks and paddle boards and and such into the creek. Um, we're still waiting right on, on Army Corps and DEC, <coughs> so and the permit expired, so we just wanted to renew it. Okay. No changes. No changes. Simple, straightforward. It's good. I'm good with it. All right. I'm good with it too. Bill, we're advancing. Yes. No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I got one more with Anna. Yeah. Yep. You want to hear my? Gets to your game. My great. <laughs> Okay, uh, Ann, Ann was uh, kind enough to uh, uh, go back and forth with emails. In the village of Southampton, we, require, we are required to get a building permit for docks. It's different than in the town. Every jurisdiction is different, but in the village, you got to go see Chris Talbot. And Chris Talbot has required handrails on uh, docks, period. And if you look at the dock that uh, I got approval for, at uh, the south end of Lake Agawam, it has a handrail, conventional handrail system. The, the new boardwalk, which I designed and got permits for at the north end of Lake Agawam, has a top handrail that's made out of tropical hardwood, and then it has uh, vinyl coated stainless steel wires underneath. That's more compliant, so I think the trustees should kind of kick it around. Um, I don't have all the permits for 405 LLC yet. Uh, you might want to take some time and think about it. But I think what would be helpful in, in the village of Southampton, you have to get a building permit. It has to have a top handrail, which is fine. And then it has to have no larger than a four inch uh, opening um, from the top handrail to the deck. So and, a four inch spear can't go through there. And the, proper way to do it. We, we gave you uh, the, the background information. I sent it in. I'd be happy to uh, repeat that, but this is a compliant handbook, and that's probably as invisible as you're going to get. 
And I think that that is something that the trustees should think about in the village of Southampton where I'm required to go get a building permit from Chris Talbot. And, uh... Can you twist that I can't see it. You guys issued West Hampton. I mean, well, no, you guys issued well, a permit on that. The urge run into it. Yeah, it's where the uh, old uh, uh, conch, what it, what, the uh, the little boat goes. It's on a, on a right at the at Pond Lane. It's right. At, we it's, go to see the ducks. It's at the village, at the end of the village, at the end of the north end of Agua. Lake Agua at the monument. At the park. Park. Yeah. Now, right. what about all the wildlife that happens to fly through there? You know, I've never say. seen a. a, a Duck gets stuck in no, there, but let's you know, say it, it could be. It, it could happen. It looks excess to me. It looks like it looks excess. excess. It looks like a lot. Uh, to me. Looks nice. It's probably code, expensive. It looks like a lot. It's code. Okay. I um, believe you. I take you word for it. Listen. Air code. Yeah, well, you got the Army Corps telling you what to do, too, Scott, so I sympathize with you. But, you know, if you didn't want it, if you didn't, it looks like if a you lot didn't want to issue the stainless steel, steel, steel wire, uh, I'll go back to Chris Talbot and ask him if we can put a... a I didn't say that. I'm saying it just looks like excess of what it is you're doing. Could you maybe delete a couple of them? That's, that's what I'm thinking. No, it's four need. inches. You oh, okay. Four spear. That, and a picture of a cart. I don't know if you know, there was an application was. <laughs> for us in the village of Pog that they wanted to put a walkover um, yeah. with stainless steel wires, and we didn't approve it because of all the birds flying down the beach. At the other end of Lake Aguam on the town trustee parking lot, where I got you uh, permits um, that the village allowed. Top handrail, bottom handrail, and a kick rail to keep uh, wheelchairs from mm -hmm. sliding in. Yep. If you want me to go back and see Chris Talbot, um, we don't need a permit on Monday. I'll go back and see Chris Talbot. What do you think? Uh, I personally don't care. Where's this location where this is going? Yeah, but they, this is Chris Talbot's note. It said, 405 Captain's Neck Lane, railing needed. So, Jim, did he cite any section of the village oh, yeah. code? Because I think you and I perhaps corresponded many months ago about how the New York State building code is completely silent on it's marine really dependent like structures, docks, et cetera. Um, um, so it's, the it's the international code, and I, I no. pr provided that big information to Anne. Right. Well, I mean, but I've done research on this same issue before. And the international building code, which is adopted and referred to as the New York State Building Code, docks is completely signed on docks, catwalks, marine dependent structures. But it sounds like the village has... Right, so I'm just wondering where the village is basing their jurisdiction for this sort of requirement. Right. And it's a four-inch sphere. Sure, but this is for buildings. I mean, I've, I've yeah. done the research on this before, and so this talks about... Um, Commercial and public buildings. How did you get this? This is someone's residential dock. I was going to ask you if the meeting is required. This is your ability. No, it's not. Each it's building department is going to interpret it differently. Oh, the oh, International yeah. Building Code applies. Yeah, I know that one. Uh, okay. And it's. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to file for a building permit at the village. There's not a particular hurry. Martha, I'll be happy to send you that stuff. Maybe you should give it back to me, and I'll email the whole st stack of stuff. In the meanwhile, I can go see uh, Talbot and see, see if. Would you rather have a, a two by four? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's okay with me. Yeah, two by fours seem to have worked. So I, he, that's what was built at the south end. Of Lake. Yeah. If you want me to, I'll go to to Chris Talbot and say, listen, south end. Of, uh, this is what Lake Aguam. This is what the village approved, yep. and uh, I want it approved for Captain's Neck Lane. And then the yeah. board has clarification. I don't have a particular time crunch, and I'll be happy to do that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. So we're holding that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Scott, you have huh? you have new diagrams there on Fox and. Oh, that, James that, and I are working on. It. Thanks for your work. Have a fun ride. You send them riches. Yes. Thank you. If I make it. <laughs> Have faith. I could always just go home. <laughs> so do you have a couple more here? Yep. I have the next one is Cold Spring Point Association. Um, this is at the end of 
Colesburg Point Road, Sean Barron's not here. He said he was coming. So let's, let's just hold this over. Hold it over. Hold it? Yeah, until he comes. Then if he doesn't come, then we just hold it for the next one. Okay. Then I have one more is with Matt. Matt, wake up. Hey, Bill, Billy missed his shot. We got to separate you guys or what? He's, um, he's just a friend. That's platonic. <laughs> oh, but he may have. That's a little bit more than I need to know. <laughs> It's a trustee meeting. Um, <laughs> Hope you guys aren't charging your clients for this. What, sitting and gabbing? Yeah. Oh, I mean, what happens in this room stays in this room. <laughs> right, James? Yeah, yeah you think so? Email my client? Yeah. Yes. Okay. This, this is 50 your TV, man. <laughs> 50 second fresh oh, pond really? road. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so, I went out there, I took photos, submitted them to Bill, I texted him. Pleading with him yes. to put it on. And I think what happened is that when the ice came, it pushed the dock this way. That's why the poles broke. Yeah. So I think we should let him replace them all at one time. I, I agree. Okay, cool. I appreciate it. Thank you. Man, it's quite in here, isn't it? <laughs> So we good to move it ahead then? Yes. All right. Anyway, any questions? Then um, if Sean comes, then we'll I'm going to tackle back. Right. I'll text him right now. Tell him that he's missing his slot. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, board. Thank, thank, thank you, you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. We're advancing. Yeah. We're advancing. Uh, yeah. Marianne, Nicalp, and Geraldo. Yeah. Cold Spring. We just put on hold for right now. Okay. So Cold Spring Point Road is on hold. The next one we advanced. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Bruce? Okay, I'm up. Yes. Bill, you're up. I'm up. Bill? <laughs> How you guys doing? All right. Good. Nice bag. This is a renewal for 1175 Flying Point Road. Form a dune restoration by placing approximately 3,500 cubic yards clean sand, beach cabal of sand on an eroded dune to plant beach grass. Twelve on cent to install 190 uh, feet of uh, sand fencing. One or two rows stakes to be placed on the beach where fencing will be located. No treated materials to, will be used, to, and a full dune restoration be formed after uh, September 1st, 2019, and before March 31st, 2020. Um, the only thing I see missing is that the f sand fencing. Can't be no more than 10 feet away from the dune. But if the dune's not there, it's pretty hard to measure it, huh? Yeah, right now. Yes, uh, Billy Mack, First Coastal. Well, if you throw the stakes in, I'll sneak down there. Pardon me? If you put the stakes in the ground where you want to put the fence, I'll sneak down there. Okay. All right. Good. All right. And we're likely doing this, obviously, in the winter, so. And that would try to correlate when the, if and when there's dredging that may happen. So, but yeah, happy, okay. happy to stake that. Any questions? No. Nope. Right, We're advancing well. that, Bruce? Please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think you're done, Bill. That's it, thank you. I'll stick around for the next. You have more? Yeah. Just one, but. You want to you wanna do ants? Yeah. I have no problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. This is. Do you have this, James? I'm pulling pull it up. It up? Yeah. Cool. This is uh, 336 Dune Road in West Hampton. It's, uh, you want to discuss it? Yes. It. Uh, so Billy Mack again, First Coastal, for the applicant. Um, this is a oddly shaped shoreline that we're trying to get a um, a dock that is consistent with the uh, the neighborhood there. All of these front Merchis Bay. And um, it's more ideal to have the floating dock face essentially the, the north, for lack of a better term, so the boat has a better chance during storms. So, um, and I know that um, the preferred uh, location of the float for you guys would be uh, perpendicular to the shoreline. However, for the, the uh, applicant of the boat, it would be in line uh, with the, the dock. As long as it meets the pier line. Yeah, and I th it, 
it, it will, and, and actually I misspoke, so our, our preferred uh, position of the float would be no, perpendicular to the shoreline, correct, as opposed to parallel, which is how you guys would like it. Um, so you want it, you don't want it side to, you want it head on to the northwest. Exactly. Place. So it's ideal for placing the, the bow forward mm -hmm. during storms. Are you all within side any pier line? So we are within the pier line. Since, and if you look at the site plan, James just had it up there. It's, it, it's yeah. such an oddly shaped shoreline that if we, we can, we pick that one point, then we're compliant. So um, that's where we kind of prefer it. And wanted to see how you guys felt. Is this in the village? It. It's not. Uh, yeah. Wait a second. So, yeah, it yes. is in the village. Right. Yeah. In the village. If that's easier to see. Yeah, here's a blow that up. A um, the uh, there's an existing catwalk there. Yes. So and that's trying the, to. Sorry, to interrupt. No, no, go ahead. Um, that, that's this is the configuration you guys would prefer us to do. Uh, well, that way it meets the pier line. Yeah, and that's measuring off of the um, off the side. So if we take Gave you my copy. Um, we're 97 feet off of. And is a what is 100 foot there? Yeah, I I, I believe. Uh, what is the pier line there? You know, 100, 100 feet and we're just back. Yeah, I believe 100. So we do. We we are still within that compliance, and we we meet the depth. Um, Yeah, we do need to have right. If you take it from from here, but yeah, exactly. Um, so but here is not right. So when it crosses here and here, so yeah, he's got plenty of it's over ten feet, right? Yeah, it's not like that's the issue with the shoreline. Like Thirty is, feet, it looks like. Yeah, or like a, we're a couple feet away side, from where that you spot have, is. You would be under a hundred, but if you go where you are now, you're over a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, I see. So it's essentially where you measure from the shoreline, and it's and such then, an irregular shoreline that it's. And you said we we thought about maybe going like <coughs> cutting over across and then coming out, and then you said that going diagonally. Then we don't have the same depth within the right. Like, there's a hole no, right no, there. No, you. I think because uh, um, I think the DEC say that well, you see, do that or something. You couldn't come. Oh yeah, the DC. Over I think would prefer here. not us to uh, right. for us not to use any more of the uh, you know, since there's an existing dock there. They make any more go. catwalk yeah. over the wetlands. Is yeah. there was the other suggestion? Yeah. And there is an appreciable depth difference once you get out because you can see it drops down from you know 1.9 all the way to four feet within a matter of 10 feet there, less than that. So, um, and with that, it does, the trustees do have the ability to uh, consider site-specific conditions per your no, we do. regulation. Uh, it's point number 23. Uh, the trustees always consider site-specific conditions. For example, if the minimal amount of length increase will give the homeowner an appreciable water depth. Well, and I mean, that, the way you measure this, you have two different points of measurement. You have one from where the uh, meadow is much further south and cut in, and you have another one, and it goes from anywhere from 112 feet on one to 60 feet on the other. So, you know, it's a, you know, you see that? Yeah, I do see that. I mean, so, I mean, realistically, it's not, It's not so a you, straight shoreline. Yeah, it's not a straight shoreline. But if you were to take it from uh, the, the the point where, the let's say the east, uh, the, well, I guess that's the eastern side, um, then it would be in excess of the hundred feet. Have you looked at, you looked at this, James, relative right, to the other docks in the area? Yeah, I mean, you, up at all. If you move it. Like this, this map shows not the one on the screen, but if you go what 10 feet to the right, you're at 112 feet all the way out, and then you move to the to the left, to the and you're, you're 97 feet. Yeah.
just 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 the change in that uh, you know and, and since they have an existing walkway they won't they're not allowed from the DEC to go to make an elbow, like a elbow right. to go to that section of property and go back out that way so it doesn't you know they're not allowing that I mean it's I mean it's not, it's not, not that much joint is what I'm saying exactly so. it's consistent with it with what's happening right. so on that makes trail. sense it does it certainly makes sense and I was just bringing up point 23 as a if you were to take that longer measurement this would give you the ability to as a site-specific um, condition uh, allow the appreciable depth that would um, permit that float in that location you're also not covering up more wetlands right with more dock more cat right. I think it's a, the, the favorable solution. Um, That's ours. And you know, we, again, if, if you, you move your tape measure ten feet in either direction because of the irregular shoreline. Yeah, well, it's it's not like you have a straight beach in Europe. Yeah, it's been interpolated a bit. So. I don't know. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Makes sense. Makes sense. I'm okay with it. Good. You okay with it, James? Yeah. All right. Um, is that plan correct? Just so we can make sure that that one, the one that gets up to that is. Yeah, that's the we plan see. you were looking at. This one right here? Yeah, yeah. this one. Because yeah. the one we have, that's. I, we submitted this as well so that you guys have a copy of it. So maybe if we just make sure that every, all of that matches so that. But to that's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. Sure. It's predicated upon. Um, and that would be revised doc for eleven nineteen on our site plan. If you want to reference it, the one that is uh, ninety seven feet from. Right. You have that right I there. Right? Okay. Yeah. So just make sure that that's on top. Okay. okay so we'll move that one ahead, Anne. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Good. To advance that, please, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thank you very much, Anne. And I think that's it for me, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Will you go one more? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you can keep them going. One more. Good. Get them out of the way. Out of the way. I don't see uh, Costello here. Sean, sure, you want to come up? How are you? We talked about this before. This is um, Cold Spring Point Association. It's a nearly westerly termination, the end of Cold Spring Point Road on the south side. Um, basically, we want to, uh, Martha, this is where we want to, to kind of join the other permit and take jurisdiction over. Mm -hmm. And you're fine with that? Uh, if we're looking at it as a continuation of that pre-existing yes. permit and That's project, we, then yeah. you know, it's up to the trustees. Um, so you want to explain what you want to do there? Sure. Uh, I mean, did anybody get out to take a look? I think it's kind of why we held this over. I did. Yeah. I did. I was. I was. Didn't know we had to take a look. I was yeah. not the. No, 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 nobody was. Well, you know that. It, it was me mostly. Probably. Was the one right on the point as you yeah. go on the east side? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the big long bulkhead. Not the turnaround, but the bulkhead. There's oh. like 50 feet of. With the stones, where there's a couple of docks. The house across the street on yeah. the, on the, it, on the property there. Where we're the washed out, and they put yeah. some stones there years ago, and they yeah. they, wanted, did it. they wanted to fill it in, and we yeah. said no. Oh, the, so they got you guys approved some existing bulkhead about. I'll bring a scale with me. Up there, too. I don't want to say. You got a scale we can use? I do. That's like 45 feet. So the application. This is. Yep. Thanks. Um, that's basically, you're going to bring it up past the. Yeah, 45 feet. So they're going to make the, the telephone pole. 
Yes. The existing section of bulk of that was previously approved was about 45. They proposed an extended 45 feet. The only mistake we did for this that we should have had them used on Actually, the stones. Good. Yeah, they used the blue stones. Yeah, we should have them used names. Those are pretty sharp stones. Yeah. So I think, I don't know if we can, what it would look like if, if we, the new stuff was the native stuff. Well, you would just <coughs> mix them up, you know. You could mix them. So it'll, it'll be kind of like a, a real low bulkhead. It's, it's not going to be any higher than the, the road surface. Um, there's not going to be any dead men. It'll just be the sheet piles and then a whaler up top that's holding it. So what are you going to do, a continuation of what's here now? Yep. yep. Just to like minimize the servants too. They don't want to Isn't this somewhere. way out of our jurisdiction? Nope. That's Pecanic no. Beach Road. Pecanic Beach Road and also it's Cabarnic because we gave permits for this over here, so it's tough not to. But this is I'm kind of confused. Yeah, we, right here, we're hooking on to, to right here. I'm not bring this forward. I mean, okay. It's to the um, east down the road. It's getting chewed up more oh, during storms. Right. You've been there. Eight. I'm in the wrong spot. I'm thinking, yeah, okay. Yes. So it's not the house ahead. on yeah. the end. It's back on it's the, back on the, the left. pond side. Yeah. Yes. Where the Here. beach is kind of like right up next to the road. There's, I took a There's an aerial. Down. So is it Pecanic Beach Road or is it not Pecanic? It's Cold Spring Point Road. Yeah, no, 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 I understand that. It's not the bay. It's not the bay side. No, it's not the correct. It's, it's, uh, it's, in the, it's in the pond. Yes. All right. Yeah. So we would have 10 foot jurisdiction. But I think he's trying to get it as a uh, continuation of a project that well, the trustees really permitted. Okay. What year was it, Sean? I, Fred I had was here about the yeah, jurisdictional we meeting at the, the last work session. Because when we did this down in, in Mill Creek and we extended to the boathouse, Marty had an issue with this. Yes. But we took the, I mean, it would be just in a, it would be coming off of the trustee, trustee structure. Um, you know that was? About eight that? years ago. I think the old permits in the, in there. What, what year was it that the initial project built? It's about eight years ago. Actually, it might be the old permit. Was, was Edna at the last work session? No, it was not. Right, so I had no. raised that jurisdictional question at the last work session. Um, so there's already a trustee structure that's upland beyond March 2011. Structure. Okay. And, um, you know, I think that if this project is a modification of that previously permitted project extending it, then um, it would make sense for the trustees to have jurisdiction. Otherwise, uh, you know, it well, may require a consultation with the Environment Division over jurisdictional issues, but yeah. but the road's going to wash out there. That's that's been that's the problem the whole time I've been on the board. Without yeah. So at its, at its closest point, the existing average high water is like ten feet it, from what's proposed. There's, 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 there's no there's no distance to the ground where there needs to be. It's it's ten feet from the closest part of that structure is ten feet from the average high water. I'm yeah. sure if you went out there the day before yesterday, yesterday we we're having that good blow. Not today. Not today? Tonight. Or even today, right? The road's probably water underwater at high tide. Well, since we since we've allowed this structure to be built, the stones particularly in front of it, it's actually accumulated some beach there. Prior to that, it was washed out right up to here, Billy. Yeah. That's and I I think when Fred was here, if you looked at that survey prior to that on those old plans, the washout was all the way up to the road. That's why we had, we did it. We did there it. There is beach that accumulated there. Yes. Because I went down and looked. But yeah, but pictures. since the rocks have been placed there, the beach is actually this built was out. Not, this was not even here. Right. So it was. It, it was. It was the. There was no grass there. Right. It was all stones, and it was what lands coming back. Where, where these stones are here, yep. it was all washed out to the road. Right. So that's why we, I remember it. Now. Yeah. So they're kind of going to do the same thing. Extend it. Some armor yeah. stones in front. I mean, some no. bigger stones. It, uh, out. it needs to be done unless the road's going to wash into the bay. Yeah. Right plant some vegetation in between the two sets of rocks. I would yes. definitely that do would the vegetation. That yeah. would, that would yeah. catch that we'll, have, we'll have a mofflet down and low. You had asked about the native stones. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe the new stones should be native stones. Whatever you guys require, we'll put yeah. it on there. How, how far is this from the westerly terminus? Of the, uh, I'll try it, yeah. of the road. 750 feet? No, it's back this way. Westerly terminus? Keep of going. what? Of, of Cold Spring Point, where <coughs> keep going. There it is, right there. See, all right, so, uh, 700, about 750 feet. Yeah, if that's a thousand from the point 
and then there's the house, the, the property in the house, the road, which has the driveway going in it. So I don't know if you're aware of this, but there is also uh, an application for the Conservation Board right now to widen the road and create a turnaround. I'm trying to do like a hammerhead um, at the Westerly right. End that the Homeowners Association is also bringing. So um, hmm. I would say at this oh, point we should probably consult with the Environment Division to make sure that this project isn't conflicting with point, the other Martha. project. Yes. Sean, did you hear that? Sure. I, I'm. Did you? I'm not sure how it would conflict with the other project. If it well, not conflict, with but so that, it? so that they complement each other. Yeah, because if, if what happens if they want the road a little bit wider there, because to make the turnaround, or if they're going to put catch basin. How far away is it? 212 feet. 212 feet? To, to the, the end of the road? To the end of Coldstream Point Road. Yeah, it goes right into the driveway in there. If the they're going to pitch the road differently to catch the, the drainage. Yeah, I mean, sure, if you want to check, no problem. I don't think it yeah. should conflict with that, but... It, does the application contain any of this, any portion of this, or...? No. Well, I have no idea. That's... It, what kind of... What I, I think they, they have... It's, it's an application of the Conservation, Conservation Board for the widening of the road. They're doing, like, a, as far as I understand, because I know the same engineering firm that did these plans is working on that, they're doing a, a hammerhead turnaround. So I think it's, it's, all, it's all upland stuff. There's actually a bulkhead already down there, and they're doing like what you would call a hammerhead turnaround, so you can pull down there, back around, and pull back without going on the other gentleman's property that happens no, to the, into the driveway. Yeah, something like that. But three point two. Whatever. If you want to, if you want to throw, we would would, like, would we be in favor of a more road? No. No. So no. I don't think so I would I be in favor of. Aware that there is an application pending before the conservation <coughs> board, and some type of catch basin. Board can determine whether yeah, or I mean, not they want to consult with the is, is there in that design where they're going to do that? Is there any catch basins in the road? And that I, I don't know. I don't know it in that much detail. That's that's out of our jurisdiction. Clearly, yeah. yeah. We can make a recommendation. We can make like where we do the bulkhead. It could be a catch basin there. But if you if you need want to refer to this conservation board, by all means. Yeah, I. I'm not aware of the application, yeah. so... I mean, it could be fine just how we're doing it, too. Well, we're just trying to protect a little bit of the road where it's being washed out. Yeah, I understand. Actually, it's east of it where it's going east, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Correct. it's away from their project. Yeah. It's going away from the Conservation Board's project. It's going east, and theirs is going west. West. Towards, towards the house, so... Might be a good, far enough distance away. What's not? Yeah, I don't know enough two, of the specifics of the project. I just know that there's two, two applications that the um, that are being brought by the uh, the homeowners association regarding the road. James, do you think we should take a look at those applications before we move this forward? Are they anywhere near this? Um, I'm not really sure. I don't. I can't seem to figure out where the. I so think I have it pulled up, but. Cold Spring Point Association is who your client is. Is the homeowners Sean? point? Yep. A and the. The clients for the road widening so Cold, is Cold Spring Point Road is a private road owned by all the tenants in common, basically. But there is a homeowners association, Cold Spring Point Association, and in their formation documents, they were formed to maintain and manage the road. Um, so all the people that live on Cold Spring Point Road, they have an interest in the road, but in the interest of getting things done, the association is the one that brings forth the applications and does the actual work of maintaining the road. Okay. They have made you aware of any of this or any intention of connecting or, you know, no. No, I, 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 just, no, I, just, I saw some of the stuff the Rainer Group was doing, but other than that, I'm not It's there. either that we can move it that. forward and contact the Conservation Board and uh, Environmental Division and see if they want to have any input. Oh, I think you just had it there. What's that? You just do the survey that they submitted. Oh. That didn't look like it was the same area. Right, so there's that existing bulkhead. They're just doing that little rectangular area so they can Back Turn out. around, yeah. yeah. Like a K turn. Right. It's nowhere near where we are. All right, it's not near. Totally out of our. Yeah. Area. Okay. I guess we can put this ahead. Yeah. We're advancing that? Yep. Uh, yes. Yes, please. Thank you. Looks like previous pavement, actually. Yeah. Good.
Good. All right, so we're going to advance it. Cool. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thanks for waiting for me. We'll be waiting just for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we would have been home Mr. by Ivan's giving you a call. <laughs> we would have sent you traffic by now. Yeah. I'm going to be sitting there anyway. Right. I've got one Douglas and Claudia Norris, 41 Crescent Street, Sag Harbor, Costello Marine. Um, he's proposing to install two eight inch diameter mooring piles. Uh, and that's it. Good. Yeah. That was easy. We're advancing that, Bruce? Please. I've got one more. Uh, 21 Mutrog Drive, Noyak, which is Mill Creek. Uh, remove existing storage shed, remove 114 feet of existing face bulkhead for wide wood walkway, remove existing west bulkhead return and fence, construct 114 feet of new face bulkhead in place, raise the top elevation plus 18, construct 45 of new west bulkhead return and 12 feet of east bulkhead return, fill void landward with new bulkhead with clean trucked in fill approximately 140 cubic yards. Regards, regard, regrade area and plant a natural vegetated wetland non-disturbance, non-fertilized buffer as required by wetlands permit CB18064. What's the height of the bulkhead on either side with the 18 inch elevation to the subject? <coughs> There's no, I'm sorry, to answer a question real quick. There's no bulkhead to, to either the, side. Either side. To either side. Okay, so are returns sufficient to prevent any type of erosion? Down drift. I haven't seen the plan, so. Yeah, hold on to them. There you go. Board received an email from Teresa Mason of the Environment Division today questioning the amount of fill. She believes it's more fill than is needed or that the fill will end up extending past the 10 foot um, <coughs> jurisdictional area that the trustees have. This property is already encumbered by a covenant pursuant to a conservation board permit. So anything they're doing really has to be limited to the 10 foot. Um, <coughs> jurisdictional extensions the trustees get because of the bulkhead. Um, my other recommendation is that the removal of the shed should be stricken from the project description because that's not something within the trustees' jurisdiction to be well, approving. Uh, is the shed yeah. within the 10 feet? Yeah. If it's in, in with the 10 feet. No, but it has to be part of the bulkhead. It's got to be related to the bulkhead. Gotcha. Your jurisdiction extends 10 feet okay, because so of the bulkhead. Passed. No, it's past 10 feet. Past 10 feet? Yeah. But it's also not attached to the bulk. No, it's just freestanding. Yeah, so it needs to be taken out of the project description. Yes. Yeah. James, could you put the aerial back up that side? Is yeah, it? basically they're taking the shed and they're putting it way up here, so yeah. it's not nothing that would yeah. that's, not that's attached. That's part of their conservation board permit. It's not. It's not within our jurisdiction no. because it's not attached to the bulkhead no. sitting on it or anything. It's, no, she gets it off. Yeah, this is a designated walking path through the. Again, pursuant to the conservation board approval that they obtained before submitting their application. But isn't there a bluff there? So if you're putting the fill, isn't it going to fill behind the bulkhead and make a natural? We construct a natural block. I, I don't have enough information to speak on those conditions. Pitches. Two pictures it, first. It says in here, based on the applicant's plan proposal, yeah. 100 cubic yards. It says extended more, more than 10 feet landward bulkhead in order to match the five foot contour. Please see attached survey. If you got the survey, I didn't see any pictures in here. There is. There is. There's up on the screen. Oh well, there you go. Thanks, James. 
It's good, James. It's in color. Mm. Tell me if you want to stop. No, 100 feet. I'm 100. That's more than they need there. I mean, I would say they're raising it up 18 inches. <coughs> so what is it? 100? What's it? 100 feet? 100 and how many feet long? 140, isn't it? 140. 114. Remove 100. 114 by 10 by 18 inches. What's this cubic yards of material needed? <laughs> Come on, James. We need, we need, we need, we need that calculator. 114 yeah. by 10 by 18 inches. That's the amount of material that would be needed, cubic yards of material, right? They also have wetlands vegetation just landward of the, the boardwalk. So the Environment Division also um, requested that, you know, as part of the permit condition, that uh, the trustees require revegetation of the uh, buffer area. Whatever's there. Yeah. Which is sort of standard for the trustees to do anyway, but it would keep them in compliance with also their conservation board. Now, that has permit. a walkway behind the bulkhead, correct? Mm -hmm. What are they asking for as far as the walkway? Are Take it out. Take it out. So we're getting rid of that walkway and we're going to get a natural re -veg. Yep. So that's a good... Got rid of the shed too. Yeah. But that's... Yes. Yeah, so we're getting a, a lot of good stuff done here. We're getting rid of a walkway, we're getting more vegetation there, and... They're elevating it so it won't run off into the bay. So it's kind of <coughs> a win-win situation. We just want to make sure that this the material, the amount of material that's put there, it's not going to be like, you know. Yeah. Going. Maybe we understand thing there. I mean, they reference the wetland permit in their application as well. So it's acknowledged that all it's the stuff. Great that area to plant a naturally vegetated wetland, non-disturbance, non-fertilization buffer as required by wetlands. Permit CB one eight zero okay. four. So they already. It's also got to be four inch do they want below the top of the bulkhead. Uh, too. Yes. Want more than that? Um, I mean, I'd have to look at her email again, but I, I wrote back to all the trustees saying that I concurred with Teresa's recommendations, which are pretty similar to what the you trustees the, normally do. Want um, the packet from her, Teresa? Yeah, I no, it's, it's I fine. It. Um, no, she she had recommendations about you know ensuring that the. There we go. Sounds like you do the right thing. Um. What are the, let's see what the plans Environment says. Division recommends that the project be redesigned to limit the fill deposition. That's an issue for the trustees to determine. Um, so those portions of the buffer within the 10 feet of the bulkhead, that's your jurisdiction. Um, and to revegetate the buffer in accordance with the requirements of the wetlands permit. Um, so she's talking about your 10 foot buffer. You can also impose a similar uh, Reveg. condition that, you know, Requires them to, you know, comply with their conservation board. So maybe, maybe Costello needs to have it's Costello, right? Yes. Maybe they need to have somebody come in and speak to the level of uh, for the yardage of fill and how it's going to work into the contour lines and how it's going to segue into that other jurisdiction. Maybe they need to have somebody come in and explain that, you know, because we don't have the calculations, right? We don't, and you don't. 140 cubic yards, I said. So that's a lot of 140. Is pretty the plan. Okay. I gotta have a conversation with Jack anyway, so this will just so will hold us. Well, yeah. And they also need to revise their project description to remove the shed from there. So I would say they probably they should come in and speak to that. Perhaps maybe just show how it's going to contour in. That way, there's no issue. Yeah, it's clear. I mean, it sounds to me like everybody's on the right track here. Um, there just needs to be, I think, a little bit more clarification. You know, calculation on that 10 foot yeah. versus times with the contour, so it yes. segues into the other jurisdiction. All right. I want to know for sure. Holding this, Bruce? Please. Thanks, Lucy. <coughs> Kelly and Hume for students' development. Did we already do the uh, 41 Crescent Street 
Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. That. So what are we doing now? First students development. First, first students development. development. First students yep. development. Twenty Cove Lane, West Hampton, Kelly and Hume. So this is a 156 foot catwalk with a three by 12 ramp, 60, six by 20 foot float, um, and two eight inch diameter pilings. Uh, untreated wood, open grate decking. Uh, catwalk will connect to the existing deck. Um, catwalk, catwalk will have a minimum height of two feet, two feet six inches above grade. Um, float and dock are seasonal and to be re removed and stored in an upland location, not on the wetlands. All compliant. Is, yeah. Um, James and I went back and forth with um, the agent and we think that we're ready to go on this. All right. As long as you guys. And you're how far off of that property line? It was sufficient. Not with these glasses. No, I just pass it down. Okay. I was going to say, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to read they those. They could pull that back a little bit, couldn't it? Uh, well, you want the inside of the float at two. Yeah, I mean. There's an existing five. catwalk. I'm just looking at the existing panel. deck. What's that, that they're connecting to. It's solid. Yeah. I just want to check it, that's all. No. I need more help with this. James, can you blow that up a little bit? Where do you want? Uh, for the dock and the float. Just for the float here? Yeah, I think it measures. We're looking at the pier line, right? Mm. No, the yeah, off the, the property, off line. property line. The distance. The, the, uh, the one yeah. inch to Just make sure it's hitting that 10. Right? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, off the. Extended sure, 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 the side of the side yard. So it's right here. So it's five eighths. Five eighths would be fifteen, it's about twenty feet. So it's about 20 feet off the property line. That's still you what you need. Yeah. 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 Right. So you guys are okay with this? Yep. I'd like Thank to advance this. Cost. Are we advancing that in? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, next one is SL2. Oh, no. We already did uh, 405 okay. Captain Snook. Yep. Um, Michael Hausman. This is uh, 24 and 47 Pearson Road We've in Flanders. Do you want to describe it? Uh, yeah, um, Mr. Hausman actually owns the property across the street as well as a big chunk of the wetland area uh, that you can see in yellow. His house is uh, right there. Um, we had actually first tried to uh, trade all the, the uh, wetland areas that he owns um, to the county. The county has this little piece of property that they got for taxes next door, not to build the house, but to be able to put his dock on. And uh, it was just a bureaucratic morass, you know. And, and it seemed like it was a great idea. I even went to a, a community uh, preservation to see if we could help get them involved, and that didn't work. Uh, in the past, I had worked on this that big wetland area. There's a berm that had been put in there. Yeah. And we had actually, as part of a violation settlement, probably 20 years ago, we broken a hole in the berm to let it uh, flood in uh, more, uh, which actually worked very well. But anyway, he'd like to have a dock, the uh, bottom line. And uh, he owns it. And uh, I wish there was a way to make it a shorter uh, run to it. But I think, Ann, you had uh, made some comments on how you wanted it designed. And uh, I believe we have. Uh, met those uh, requirements, right. but the so best would have been got the water kind of property. Oh, there's plenty of water. Yeah, there. it's yeah. just crossing the yeah. wetland area. Yeah, it's so it's a long catwalk, as you can see. The thing that we wanted to make sure about was there's a paper road there, so we want to make sure 
it's complicated if the catwalk runs across the paper road, so we want to start. Who's, who's the paper road? All the, the paper road. It, you would have to get approval. Right from it's the from, from the, right from the town. Yeah. You know. And all the homeowners that surround. I don't paper think so. Road. I think I, I yeah. I don't I don't believe it's. So a town now, road. who owns to actually if it's a paper road? So we're, no. we're trying to figure we're trying to figure that out right now. So I think that's what you have to. It's so what we're doing is drawing the catwalk back so that it doesn't. It starts on Mr. Hausman's property, not right. on the paper road. Right, so okay. we can so walk across no. the road so where's, now. Where's high tide relative to where the start is? Uh, yeah, I guess it's yeah. easier. Yeah. Yeah. James. High, high water is right at the edge of the bank. Spring yeah. high goes further this is in. The, it's the red. This is the, this is the, the red right one. Yeah, mm -hmm. the paper road? The green is the paper road. Oh, see where it says split rail oh, fence. The green. Yeah. Split rail fence. I mean, the, it's right at the edge of the yeah. of the drawing there. So. Proposed natural path. Oh, split, split rail fence. Yeah. yeah. So split the, rail fence is actually on the county property. So you you would start at just right at the yeah. right right at the road yeah. the the, yeah, the boundary of the road. I think that'll be fine. Right. Yeah, I wish there was some way that we could have uh, uh, worked out. Uh, a swap. It just, uh, and again, who's willing? That, that's a really big piece of wetlands. Who's willing to add to the just county county? Yeah. 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 Give to the trustees. Yeah. There's a well, metal there, right? Mm -hmm. like it's fragmites. Yeah, fragmites. There, there's some backrests uh, in there as well, but mostly fragmites. There's some photos up there. Do you have anything, James, that shows where the paper road is? Because it doesn't really show that well on there, does it? Well, you can show it in Land Manager. Yeah. And, and add yeah. the 2018. It, it's, 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 it's right, right there. there. You can, can see at the edge of the uh, the red the so property line. Sorry. Yeah. That's, the, hey, that's the paper road. I'll get started. Start at the paper road. That actually goes up and takes a turn. Yeah. It shows. The red bits. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that shows clearly. So it's the catwalk is going to start seaward of the paper road. So there's, it's not. Now this whole entire catwalk, what is there? Is it just marsh? Or is it watery? Yeah, no, it's uh, Phragmites with some, with some backers down to the down to the high water uh, mark. So there's uh, photos on the screen. Yeah, there you go. Is it something you can make a brown bark trail part of it, or is it? Oh, that's what I Ann suggested. We are through through some of it, so you um, don't need a huge. Well, it's 180 feet long now, so. Yeah, but it starts getting down to. You can see where Spring High is. Uh, yep. On it, and that's basically where we we started the the catwalk, okay. which would seem to be yeah. a logical place yeah. to start. It. I mean, we know all that grass goes up here. What is the elevation of the catwalk? Um, well, we raised it to four feet above the grade. You know, uh, so you're not even going to see it when the uh, frag money grows. Mm -hmm. No, and like I say, I, it just, I, w I wish we could have had the trade, you know, I mean, it's just, yeah. uh, you, well. know, so, uh, you know, he's still willing to, he'd like to give some of the wetlands away, but no one seems to want it, so. We'll talk oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to him about that. Mm -hmm. right. We give him an easy way to go over it. it yeah, no, I just, uh, at least we're paying taxes on it. You know, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. Right. You and guys. Oops, sorry. No, that's fine. I just want to, at some point, I'd like to discuss uh, Phillips Point. Um, Today or no, going, not, going not, for, No, yeah. it could be yeah. going forward. I got, I got the schedule. Right. 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 You know, so yeah. so uh, w w whenever is good. Right. So I think that'd be a great project yeah. to discuss. Well, it's a nice yes. project up there. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll coordinate with his schedule. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. You want to put it on yep. oh, yeah. the next work session? Yeah, yeah put this yeah. on the next work session, yeah. And then we can make copies. The board has copies to take with them. Okay. We make copies. Okay. Yeah. So next work session. Thanks. Lisa. Thanks, Chuck. And can we advance this? It's we can advance this. Um, 47, 24 and 47. Yes. 24 Please. and 47. Thank yep. you, Ann. Sure. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Last one. Mr. Enrico. This is West Hampton Bath and Tennis Club, 228 Dune Road, West Hampton Beach. Um, it is dredging project. Do you want to yes. describe it? Again.
Yeah, the owners um, at the West Hampton Bath and Tennis um, have an issue with uh, some large vessels at their marina. So they're looking to uh, clamshell dredge two portions of the marina, one on the, uh, the northwest side and then along on the, uh, on the east side. They're going to basically take the material out, offload it in the parking lot into dumpsters and then truck it across the street to the property that they own where the, the, the hotel is and then place it behind the dune. Uh, behind the uh, main hotel. If it dries. Yes. Um, we did receive the DEC permit. We had to have the material tested. I was going to ask that. Yeah. yeah. So the, all sand, right? It's pretty much all yeah. sand. I was there actually during the testing, and you could see it when they were taking the cores. A little bit of uh, black on top, but it was almost like all sand. Layer. Yeah. Um, I don't believe that area has ever been dredged before. That was going to be my question. Yeah. I think, we, I think they did Hubbard's, part of Hubbard's one time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. The uh, next door. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and that's all silted in, and again, as well. It's right near the bridge. It, yeah. It and as a matter of, yeah. As a matter of fact, that's even even more silted than what I show there. Uh, the, the dock catches it. Yeah, and um, yeah, that, that's almost like a groin there on that that corner. So that I guess apparently they had to have one or two large vessels that they like to put over there, and then along the uh, the east side. So they're pretty much going to do a, a clamshell right into a dumpster because they have so much property, so much room there. I don't know why. Yeah, see that? And it's, they got the Ostraka residence. It's just to the east, right? Is that yeah. What it is? yeah. Yeah, he's on the other side. Yeah. Which is basically not bulkheaded. It's, right. It's all more uh, meadow. And that's the uh, main hotel across the way. So we're going to just see the path. There's, it is already a, a vehicle path yep. along the east side, and you can just place it. Yep. And there's just there's so much room there. Uh, the dune is several hundred feet wide. Well, good. It's, yeah, that's it, fine. Well, shouldn't be much of an issue. I know. Um, I think I spoke with you. It's so just a one-time year permit. Is that what it is for mm -hmm. one time? Right. For DEC Army Corps, we've getting five years right. for maintenance. Come back to us. Yes. I understand. Once you get I mean, it one, one time from us, it's easy to get the second time. Okay. All right. Because you have the maintenance. Oh, it's a, then it becomes a maintenance. No, it issue. doesn't become, but it's you. You have the maintenance for the DC and Army Corps. Right. Yeah, we already have those. So yeah. You just yeah. mimic it what you want, dredged. I mean, I don't expect to actually come back within five years there, it, because it's been, um, from what the owner described <coughs> to question. me, it's. Question. It's, question. Sorry, it's thank just you. a situation that occurred just, I guess, over the years. There's a lot of boats backing in and all and then causing yeah. some siltation yeah. then near the bridge. So I think I have a feeling once they do this, they won't be yeah. back for another 10 years, maybe. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 It would be <coughs> okay. cheap enough. To, the testing was expensive yeah. enough as it was. Yeah. Expensive. Oof. But we didn't have to test for dioxin. Because we got a letter from West Hampton Fire Department. There was no fires in the area for the last 40 years. So basically, DEC uses that as a proxy that there would not be di There's no expect to have dioxin in the area, okay. so we wouldn't have to test for that. So that's a very expensive test. I'll go with it. Right. You guys are okay yep. with this? Yep. Yep. Okay. And I'd like to advance it. Yes. Thank you. Please. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Thank you very much. For Thank you. Good have a good night. Thanks, Joe. Excuse me. Are you here? You here to address the board? I'm talking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, we have done water testing with uh, your association, the trustees I'm talking about, for a little fresh pond in the past. Um, long time ago. I've been yes. testing. Five to ten years, and it hasn't been for a while. Yeah, we, we had paid for getting it tested uh, or paying for the sampling up in the upstate. Yeah. Would, you, would you, could you just come up here and introduce yourself? And oh, I, I wasn't prepared to do you, but um, if you have the time, sure. Right now, uh, so just state your name. Well, I'm sorry, Larissa Patochuk. Oh, I'm sorry, just oh, one great. second, please. All right, you good. Thank you, fine. So uh, I'm right sorry, now, can you repeat your name, please. I'm sorry, Larissa Potapchuk. L A R I S S A. And the last name? P O T A P C H U K. P O T. Sorry. A P. <laughs> a P is in Peter. 
C H U K. U K. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're with what organization? Um, Self or Little Fresh Pond Association. Okay, great. Thank you. Laura. Homeowner. Yeah. Concerned you. homeowner. So, testing, testing has been going on for since the 80s with the Council of Lakes and Ponds Associations. Yep. And I know we all contribute money for the testing. And thank you very much if you're doing it also. I just wasn't aware of that fact. Uh, a few years ago, surf riders came in and started doing some testing for other things that are not covered in the Council of Lakes testing, uh, specifically enterococcus bacteria, which is a mammal-based bacteria. We don't know what type of mammal. Uh, the different points of last summer, we had some crazy high levels, and it coincided probably with high levels of um, rain and water flow. And then it had some other things, and we were looking around to identify how do we find the root cause because we don't know what type of bacteria, we don't know if it's septic related, we don't know if it's camp related, so we start calling people. Uh, called Marty Shea, called yourselves, Larry Penny, Kevin McAllister, talked to Kim Shaw in East Hampton. She went through this and she was looking for low cost ways. Uh, long story short, we did something called Environmental Canine Services, which is just got a big contract with the New York um, City of New York to test, they identify if there's human contamination in water samples. So we did that. It was really reasonable. And this is, I'm probably sharing this because this is great if you ever have other situations that you're looking for to identify, at least see if it's human or not before you go into DNA testing. And after some badgering for the, to the surf riders, which you know, I've been donating my time, uh, they said, hey, I think you can, we can get you on some some uh, Chris Gobbler's lab testing, because they just opened up a, uh, a DNA lab testing. So we got that result, just um, samples taken last August. I just got that result a few weeks ago, just from two of our locations. So randomly throughout the year, we have, I'm sorry, throughout the summer, we have birds, you know, the geese. Apparently we've got some dogs too that come around and they might do their stuff Two of, only one of our locations had the dog, and we have different levels of human. Um, so we're looking to move forward and really understand how to best capture, uh, right now there's nothing. We don't have any issues with any human, um, I'm sorry, with any mammal bacteria. That's dog, human, nothing is showing up. And that's been since probably October or so. Uh, again, that looks like we have heavy activity through the summer months, duh. You know, it's not a big surprise. We have summer people, we have camp people, we have all year round people. Camp season is starting. Um, you probably have been aware of what's going on. They got the approval from the planning board that the environmental impact statement was acceptable. We found some holes in that, but whatever. Um, that vote was four to three, and three very logical, sought out reasons why that environmental impact statement was not acceptable due to septic flow, due to use of camps. Oh, sorry. Should I stop, you guys? I mean, I know you've. <laughs> No, it's one of our water bodies yeah, that we manage, good. so it's, it's we have very, to learn about it. It's interesting that you know what, what you're saying. I mean, um, when Fred Habermeyer was on the board, he had, was part of the Lakes and Ponds Society, and they would have meetings two or three times a year, yeah. and they were very in, involved in doing sampling and stuff like that. That that was that uh, association got kind of disbanded, and then we would just have you know like a, a few people come. In from each one of the lakes and ponds that are still interested in doing the sampling. Um, I believe the last conversation I had with uh, one of the constituents, uh, the trustees, was just have a get a baseline before the camp ever got started. And uh, moving forward, you'd have a good, you know, a good, you know, talking points. That's we would love to have this baseline. In fact, I wrote letters. We have been writing letters to the planning board about this to have before the camp season starts. We don't want to get to a situation where we're halfway through the season and we have to remediate because, as we learned today and other ways, there's no clear way that's reasonable to remediate. We don't want to throw chemicals in. We don't even know what the process is. Even Gobbler's Lab doesn't know what the process is for remediation on bacteria, human bacteria or other bacteria. We also have issues with possible um, industrial chemicals from cleaning from pools. Um, I'm sorry, let me go back for a minute. So ZBA once again got the uh, got the application, and they two weeks ago, or middle March, early March, identified that yep, this is a benefit to the neighborhood. We can't figure that out where it is a benefit, but you know we'll go through it in detail and figure out they think it's a benefit. They have the variance to operate now, two non-conforming uses in this res in this residential zone. So 
I'm sorry. You can't really talk anything about the camp. Okay. I will. You have to try to stay away from that. Okay. We just went outside of the lake and what the pond and what the pond okay. is still. We can't go anything uphill because of I understand. litigation and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so, so with the pond. It's very hard to, you know, once you bring in. <coughs> you can't make the pond at all. Okay. That's. Yeah, we have a line. That's good. We want to test everywhere around the lake. We're testing now. We have two locations that we test um, on this side for the um, mammal-based bacteria, but we want to test in front of that area. Now, we tested the um, environmental canine services. We did test in three locations in front of the two locations by the corner and one in the front, then <coughs> ten other locations around the lake. So it's a, a fair testing, and there was human matter found in front of the camp area along with random places around the lake that was done three days after labor day on wednesday um, now we're looking to figure out what the root sources of the bacteria is we just want to prevent it we want to keep the lake u.s geological survey has given me the past few days um sean fisher is his name has given us ideas of how we can do different types of testing one of which is drilling drilling down in different sites in order to get to the water table and taking samples from there, you ship it off. Hopefully I'll be able to get some information for you as to what the cost of this would be because we feel that since this is in the Baconic watershed, it is going to be affecting everything that goes down <coughs> and has been into the waters in Big Fresh and through the water table. I'm sorry. I just wanted to hear what your process was like. Sure. Because I, long story short. I'm here right now um, for the next, you know, I'm caregiver right now. I took time off of my life to be here. So I just want to continue and make sure we preserve what we can. And I also eventually want to talk to you about doing beach cleanups around the lake and what we can do to pick up, you know, we have high water levels right now. And, you know, we all pick up, but. The rain. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, partly rain, I think just in general. Is, Around water's high. It is. The rain. It's, it's that's coming where, up. That's where it comes from. Somewhere, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I appreciate you coming forward and giving us a little oversight of what you're doing. Sorry. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah. We're looking to figure out if you have any um, insights as to the standard for doing the testing and how we can go about doing it because <laughs> as homeowners groups, it's, it's getting expensive at this point, along with all the other yeah. stuff we're doing. Yeah. Billy, but Billy, Billy, it's your area, correct? Yes. So you'd be the contact person. Yes. So I spoke to all other people okay. times. Um, right. And then it's the good news is it, things we can learn for other lakes. You know, there's so many that you're concerned of. Um, do you own every easement, every um, high water mark easement around the lake, around the lakes? And I we, heard we own 100 it. lakes and ponds oh, in the yeah. town of Southampton. The trustees we keep them in trust for everybody. Okay, so the, the high water up to the high water mark. Right. Um, so that's good, right? Around the lake. The average high. Uh, the average average mean high water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell. It, you know, because you got a dry season, you got a wet season, so it could be 10 or 15 feet difference in, in the high and low okay. over over different seasons. So we print, would we have the right to, with your approvals, do testing, approved testing, in perimeter lands? And, and maybe this is something you. Well, no, think no. About. If it's off, if it's outside of the lake, it's it's would be private property yeah. and out of our jurisdiction. But you want to drill down. If you drill, possibly. I, I don't really drill, know the right probably, solution. If it's if you drill, like within the area where we have, you probably have to come first with permission. You probably have to go to the DEC to get permission. Mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah, you want to follow a certain protocol when you sure. do these when you do these pr uh, projects because otherwise the the data yeah. you got would be skewed and it wouldn't be yeah. useless. And we could work with you on figuring yeah. that right procedure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But, um, James is very good at that. We've done it in the past in these lakes and ponds, so yes. Okay. Thank you. And then maybe this summer we can talk about uh, the end of Fresh Pond Lane and getting some barriers up and what standard other lakes are doing in order to keep water uh, road drainage from coming down. We, I know we've talked to you about With that Alex, before. With Alex, yes. Yeah. And we've, there are drains there, and, but it comes all the way from Noyak Road. Oh, and it goes, I mean, uh, pretty steep. it's Anything. pretty steep. And the, the access point is for the fishermen, and, you know, we recommend that people carry their boats, not trail them. And, you know, yeah. it, there's many, been many conversations uh, that we've had with the local people that use it, you know, the ponds and stuff like that. So we, we do have a next step, though, hopefully, that we can figure something out, even it's putting bales of hay to prevent the drainage going down in on, on the surface, rather. Yeah, the surface water. Mm -hmm. It would be best to catch it up, up 
stream on the road before it gets that, that, yeah, that far down. Close. When it gets that far down, it's got so much volume, and it's if you deep. put hay bales there, the water would just rise up, and the hay bales would just wash into that in the pond. Well, it's, it's it, not really like rivers. I mean, I've it, seen this, but it's, it's pretty. It's a quite a bit of water that goes down that road. I've been there on some of our torrential rains, mm -hmm. and it's six inches of water, and it's ten feet wide. And if you clog that up with a, some kind of hay bales, it, that six Ripples. inches goes to 18, 24, 36 in, in very quick fashion. Okay, so I guess we need to find a solution that is preventing all that road runoff then from going right in, because yeah. that's what we want. Catch it yeah. further up the road. Yeah, got to divert it to us, another area. Okay. Divert it to another catch basin. Not, not our jurisdiction. Yeah, it's, it's the highway. The highway. So, or the county. Or Could we work together with the highway, you think, maybe on this one? Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know. I mean, you have your opinions and they... Yeah. Yeah, they, we've asked them, and I think they. Yeah, I think it's. A, I think it's a pretty good, pretty well drained yeah. road. But when you get excessive rainfalls, it does cause a lot of water yeah. to go down the road. And it's just something that, you know. You have to have an engineer go down here and look at it and and basically calculate the amount of flow that goes down the road. And then once you do that, then you can put the structures to catch that flow or try to catch it. Okay. Most times, it's they try to catch the first three quarters to one inch of rain. After that. It's, they, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have enough property or enough drainage, you know, basins mm -hmm. to capture that much rain. Okay. Last summer was not so good. We didn't have a lot of rain last summer. Yes, we did. And this winter and spring, it's now, been a very wet we season. Lots. Yes. So pretty happy actually about now. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. So much. Thank you, thank thank you right. Larissa. All right. We need a motion to go into executive well, session. Hang on. Go, Matt. Be in touch with you about. Yes. Figuring is the best way to, to do again pre testing. Yes, yep. yes. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Everybody's got a copy of this. I, I referenced this at the last meeting that we had. It was a uh, proposal uh, for consulting services that uh, segues into the Meacox uh, management plan and a successful 12 month where we had a discussion with uh, the ag community, agricultural community, and the homeowners about potential for needing an incidental take permit. And you'll see the costs in here from uh, on this proposal. And you'll see the flow sheets and the charts. And this is uh, pointing in the direction that is potentially at six figures and a year worth of the process. So you, you may want to just take a look at this um, as we move forward through the process uh, in terms of what the... Uh, Do you what take the note yet to go into exact? No. Okay. In terms of what the lift is, we don't have to discuss it now, but definitely take a look at that. Yep. Right. Okay, did, so. you, did you say there is a cost <coughs> breakdown? Yeah, the, the cost is seventy-five thousand to a hundred thousand dollars. Second page, middle way down after I have been Got closed. And, and, yep. and the potential listed in here for you know all of the above, depending upon how it goes, it could be it could no, take yeah. a year to get through this process. And, you know, there could be mitigative measures that could actually end up being more costly. So it's, it's quite a process, um, but I did want to um, start to explore that because while we are finalizing the crafting of the actual management plan, um, it, it seems to be a bit of a heavy lift. And as I indicated then, it, it may make sense in the interest of time and the success of this whole thing to hire a a skilled, qualified consultant to get the trustees, and not just the trustees, get everybody through this, because it's a major for the agricultural, major for the commercial fishing, recreational fishing, and very important for all the people that live in that entire region. So, Did you ask for just one proposal, or did you approach others? Uh, no, I, I, this is just one to get a feel for this, so that the board can kind of get a feel for what's going on here. Yeah, we're, this is going to be an RFP. We, we could do an, an RF uh, exactly. But this way, we can kind of get an indication of what type of a spec we would have to look for so that if we did get proposals, you know, you, you could know where you're at, you know, yep. so you're, you're not apples to oranges. But the other side of that equation is I think it's very important for the board to, if we do take that direction, to uh, utilize somebody that really does have the experience to be able to be successful with this. And I don't know, th this hasn't been done a tremendous amount of times around here. So. We needed to start somewhere in this. No, no, start. Appreciate you 
Thank you. Yeah. So we'll get a couple. We'll, we'll actually we'll put it up for RFP if, when we decide to. Th go this it. group has has experience. Yep. Okay. okay. Lisa wants us to take that vote. All right. No, no, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, I'd like to close the meeting and go into executive session. Second. Thank you, Scott. All right. Um, for All the right. purposes of uh, litigation. Who was the second? I was. Thank you. It was fine.